Charter Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz in the Inland Empire today, and I'm really glad that Gloria Negretti McLeod is here today. She currently is a member of the Chafee Community College District, but you know her also as a member of the State Assembly, the State Senate, and the United States Congress. You also know that she is considered a moderate Democrat. That's what people have called you. I don't know if that's a, a blessing or a curse, but that's what you're called. And so I want to get a sense from you, given all your experience in politics, given your moderation and given your representation in the IE, what you make of the recent conventions, the Democratic Convention and the Republican Convention. Well, I thought they were both very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, um, I've never attended one. So really? I, so I've never had firsthand just okay. looking at it on TV. Uh, but I thought that the divergence of views is so vast that it just is like how do we how do we fill in that right. void? It, it is remarkable how when you watched the Republican convention and then the Democratic convention, the depictions of America were vastly different. I'm not saying one is right and one is wrong, but it was as if you were looking at two different Americas. And what was interesting to me is that I have always thought as an observer that the Republicans have been very effective at, at propagating the view that America is exceptional, America is great. And Democrats have been more dour. But in this convention, uh, these conventions, the reverse. The diverging views just kind of switched. I think living in America all my life, my mother, right. my father it's it's that this is a place where you can move forward and i think many 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 people right still have that view that this is a place where you can advance yourself that is my own view now in the inland empire it, it is hard to deny that it's been trending democratic although we do see some schizophrenia in the inland empire but i would presume that the blue collar whites that Donald Trump has been targeting, there are many in the Inland Empire. Those blue collar whites have been trending Democratic, as have Latino populations. But just in your travails throughout the Inland Empire, what do you hear about the views of Donald Trump, the views of Hillary Clinton, Mike Pence, uh, Tim Kaine? You know, having been in politics for a long time, Nobody really even knows who we are till there's an election. Yeah, that's so true. no, so people don't really talk to you, but you do talk amongst your own family. Right, right, of course. So then you get the views of where we are. I think by and large, uh, Californians probably think that America is still the place right. to be. But what about the Inland Empire? The Inland Empire. Because let I me, mean, I say that because the recovery in the Inland Empire has been spotty somewhat like the Rust Belt, when people are talking about Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, Wisconsin as potential t Trump targets. I think as, as the world gets better, as our economy gets better, as the recovery gets mm -hmm. better, then people seem to be more even-minded. Mm. When there are a lot of things that are tugging at you, you need to sometimes uh, pick a scapegoat. It's not, it's not my fault, right. it's their fault. But what's interesting is you can look at statistics today, and you could paint a picture that America has never been better, and you could paint a picture that America's never been worse. And, and, and so that's the tale of the two Americas that we're seeing out of this convention, well, these conventions. I, I think unlike the Rust Belt that mm -hmm. you talked about, where people lost jobs, but I mean, it's permanent. Here right. people lost jobs, but right. it's coming back. Coming so back. it's well a different kind of, well of mentality. I want to speak with you, if I may, as a Latina. Mm -hmm. It is hard to deny that Donald Trump has used inflammatory language as it relates to Latinos. He has doubled down on having a border wall built. Whether Mexico pays for it or not is unclear. He took a famous picture in front of a taco salad and said Hispanics love me. He attacked the judge who is presiding over the Trump University lawsuit, uh, an American more born man of Mexican descent, saying that he could not be um, but he unbiased, unbiased because he was of Mexican descent. Well, having, I am an American. Right. 
as are, are millions of other Latinos. Right. And so I think the fact that he used that kind of language disparagingly to a blanket thing of Hispanics is really unconscionable. I know I go to lunch with my cousins, mm -hmm. and one of same like me, been here a long time. Right. You were born here. You're born here. Yeah. <laughs> we're Americans. Right. And, and she said, you know, he called my son a rapist. Right. I mean, he used it, rapist. I mean, he, and murderers and right. stuff. And this. These are people that have worked. They're the middle class. They are probably moderate people. They're not cuckoo. Right. And so these are people that are deeply resentful of that kind of language but, to paint everybody, whether it's Muslims, right. Asians, Latinos, blacks, anything. But will the Latino population, whose voting record is improving vis-a-vis -vis its counterparts, do you believe that we'll, this is the election where we, we will see Latino voters come out in droves, presumably in favor of Mrs. Clinton because of the rhetoric of Mr. Trump? Well, we'll see if, if Trump becomes 187. Mm. And of course, what you're referring to is Pete Wilson, uh, the governor at the time, was a s very significant supporter of an initiative that was would have denied services to illegal. Except all the polls have said that Hillary Clinton is up on the polls here in California. So we are unlike other states. Right. There's no question. I mean, the r most recent poll I saw is Mrs. Clinton is up by I think 28 points in California. So Latino turnout could help, but presumably she should be successful, presumably in this state. But what about places like? Arizona, Nevada, Colorado, um, North Carolina, Virginia, where we're seeing growing Hispanic populations, Georgia. Do you feel as if the Latino population could be the sleeping giant? Well, I think it's incumbent upon them if they really feel disparaged, if they really feel insulted. Do by they? The, I don't know. I, I don't live in those states. Right. I don't have any relatives in those states. Okay. So if they really feel that it's incumbent upon them, to get out and vote and vote their displeasure. I want to get a sense from you about the feeling of unease, though, that we still are feeling as it relates to our sense of security. We do see virtually daily attacks, uh, mostly abroad, with regard to ISIS and its followers. We are right near San Bernardino. So this region is acutely aware of the power of ISIS-inspired attacks. Mr. Trump has played on that. He has drilled in on that. How do you think that plays, the issue of terrorism, both in the Inland Empire and otherwise? I think oftentimes people are willing to give up their rights in order to be safe. Mm. So we have to safeguard that, that we make it even, that we be vigil vigilant. Right on terrorist, terrorism and watch to make sure we save our country, we make it strong, but still not give up our rights just because there's somebody saying that they're going to attack us at any minute. So looking towards November, do you have a sense of where you think the country's gonna go, if you're willing to say, and um, how do you think Democrats and or Republicans will do other than at the presidential well, level? Well, I don't know. When I was in the legislature, I didn't think Gray Davis was going to be recalled. So was. we don't know. Yeah. However, a elected official has to realize that when they get elected, they no longer are that partisan person. They're still partisan, right. but they must represent everybody that lives in that country, that state, mm -hmm. that assembly district, that senate mm -hmm. district the school board, you represent everybody. You got elected to represent. Her name is Gloria Negretti McLeod. She's been a member of the Assembly, the Senate, the U.S. Congress, now on the Chafee Community College District. My name is Brad Pomerantz. Don't forget to vote in November. If you don't vote, you can't complain. This is Charter Local Edition.